it's Ryan with DSX Motorsports. Um, I'm guessing you guys probably checked out my little video already of our little walkthrough with the uh, RV. But uh, this is basically my first week, well, pretty much my first week um, with RV ownership and a little more than that being homeless. And I figure I'll talk about it real quick. So, sold my house, uh, closed on my house June 9th, 2020 if you're watching this some other time and for the first couple of days we were staying in the suburban right sam we had a little blow up mattress back there um spent a couple days in that thing trying to basically get uh, a finances in order in order to buy an rv so we were looking at different options as far as whether we we're going to drive to Florida, whether or not we we're going to drive to Ohio, Missouri, Montana, whatever, California. So we had looked at an RV previously on Sunday, the couple days before I closed, to uh, one that was in Colorado. The uptick on the one that was in Colorado was other than it being in Colorado, was that it had the engine I wanted, had the transmission that I wanted, and it had the big Spartan frame, so air brakes and a couple of other things. And I'll get into that here in a second. But went and looked at it. The guy was asking like nineteen thousand for it, and it needed new tires and probably a whole slew of other little things which we can find out and stuff like that. And so I offered him fifteen for it. He said, "There's just no way. You know, it's just too little. I got uh, you know amount that I'm trying to go for. Like the lease I would take seventeen five. So I said, "All right." knowing damn well that I didn't have money to buy the RV that day, I figured we'll just resume this conversation on Tuesday and kind of see where everybody's at. So, that being said, we uh, um, went aggressively online to look at RVs to see what was available. First thing, I, and another thing that I did too, is I reached out to Adam Jabay because Adam Jabay, the, uh, the co-owner of Grid Life, He's an RV guy, well, kind of an RV guy, and he's got some experience with it. And I kind of wanted to get an idea of, like, you know, one, was I paying too much or looking or had too high of expectations for what my budget was? And two, like, really, what are the gotcha items on an RV? Like, do I need to be worried about, uh, um, you know, specific things? So first thing, uh, going to Adam, Adam told me, you know, I kind of showed him the coach I was looking at was like twice the amount that he paid for his and uh with double the miles as well so there was that kind of going against me but he did talk about how the, the the coach had a lot of stuff that he had to work on and a lot of things that they needed to do to it as well um but he basically said you know make sure that things been maintained the engine transmission brakes that kind of thing those are the big spend items and the little stuff like in the coach those are simple things that you can fix. I mean, they're not super crazy most of the time. Like even electrical stuff's not that hard. So he basically told me to make my focus primarily the, the maintenance and the drivetrain. So I was like, okay. We went online, uh, Frank Spurs um, and his wife Katrina and I, basically three of us going hard looking at like everything on Facebook Marketplace, looking at stuff on like the RV websites, looking at uh, Craigslist, anything that we could find and and pushing it to 20,000 knowing that you know with the 17.5 plus tires we're going to be over 20,000 just trying to kind of see what uh, um what we could get 20,000 was my original like upper limit and I was hoping to actually find something for cheaper than that uh, so that being said I mean 20,000 was already an amount that I was willing to pay but it's definitely kind of like a new uh, like a new price point. So we're looking online, uh, looking at all the different options and stuff, and we're finding tons of 5.9 setups, like not very many A3 setups. And then we're looking at these A3 setups, like similar to the coach that was in uh, Colorado. Some of the things that we're seeing is like, we realized look, looking at that coach, and we also looked at a couple of coaches at some local RV places that sell used RVs, and that like the pictures don't show you that much so like sure a picture of a tire that's fully treaded you know shows you the tires fully treaded but doesn't show you that the tire is 20 years old or 18 years old like the case it was on the rv that we ended up buying it doesn't show you you know what leaks it doesn't show you what canopies aren't torn up it doesn't show you the true condition of the interior 
uh, some other things that we realized actually looking at RVs that like an 8,000 watt generator was going to be like a minimum that we wanted and a lot of them had 6,500 watts or you know didn't have coordinating countertops so basically trying to justify the amount for the unit in Colorado I mean and taking into consideration that we didn't have to drive you know clear across the country in the suburban to go pick one up and then drive it all the way back hoping that it would make it and then also to make sure that I was making the right deal so after we examined all that, I reached out to the guy again on Tuesday, and I told him, I was like, hey, listen, if you able to come down on any more on your price, like, are you getting, are you willing to come down to 15, you know, blah, 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 whatever, and he's like, the only thing, he's like, I, I've got people who want to look at it, it's like, but I'm willing to go down to 17,000, and I was like, okay, knowing what we were getting ourselves into and giving me some room to actually get tires, we decided that would be the option we did, so we set it up to pick it up that following Monday which meant another couple of nights in the Suburban, which wasn't a big deal. And um, and then from there, picking up the RV and going forward. Well, he reached out to us like Thursday night and said, hey, come pick this thing up Friday if you're down for that, and, um, and that'll be good for me. I was like, sweet. So I get the money from the bank, we go and pick this thing up, and I told him it was like pending on its driving making sure that the engine action and the, the whole coach actually goes and stops and stuff like that. So we got the coach, we drove it down the road and you can definitely tell the tires are hella flat spotted, uh, shifted a little bit hard going into the gears and stuff, but ultimately went through all the gears. The thing stopped just fine. I had an exhaust brake that needs a little bit of work, but an exhaust brake that was semi-functional and the main bits were there. Um, so we bought it. We brought it back to Platteville. Frank and Katrina and his daughter, uh, Caden, helped me clean the snot out of it. Uh, we spent a lot of like hours and hours and hours cleaning this thing. We um, got like the front AC working, but also found other problems like the generators, alternator doesn't work, and just other little stuff, you know? And some of it ends up being kind of like being a little bit picky, but finding that there's a bunch of little things that uh, need to be fixed. But that's totally cool. Um, we get this thing cleaned out. Uh, I go and get it registered uh, on Tuesday because of the COVID. So I got to spend the whole weekend with it. And spending the weekend in it, man, it was so nice. The nice part, like you literally could go to sleep, wake up, take a shower, use the bathroom, whatever you wanted to do, cook, clean, literally from the comfort of your vehicle. Compared to the Suburban, I mean, it was a night and day difference. The dogs seemed to get into it and they seemed to enjoy it enough. Um, but it opened up this whole other aspect of RV life that I didn't in, really anticipate. It's something I kind of noticed, like building up to this point. But um, I think that I anticipate was just literally how hard it really is to just park anywhere you want. Um, the neighbors don't like it. Uh, the police don't really care for it. The neighbors are complaining and stuff, especially in my old neighborhood where the neighbors didn't really like me anyway. And you realize this, like, man, this is actually, like, a lot harder to find a place to just hang out, even if it's just for a couple of days, without feeling like a criminal the whole time. You know, where you can actually be comfortable, where you can, you know, take the dogs out when you want, when you can, uh, you know, blast the music or whatever it is that you want to do. Um, so... The next couple nights after we registered it, we went and spent some time down by Nick's place in Denver. I spent a couple nights over there, and then we were doing stuff during the day. So we are just literally there for the night. So, you know, went and picked up a gun, went and picked up all kinds of fun stuff, and uh, um, and really just get and got tires. Uh, but really just getting the truck set up. But I realized, like, pretty much with my little short stint in Platteville, like, I need to find a permanent place, a semi-permanent place to try to hang out. Um, one of those things, I reached out to a couple of people, a couple of friends of mine, like Tom Anderson, the guy I rent uh, my uh, airplane hangar from, and you know, other people have some space and stuff, or maybe some temporary life. Because once we're on the road, I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. I wasn't sure whether or not it would be or not, but this weekend, actually here, and I'm actually here at High Plains Raceway to, uh, to literally watch the Pony Express, and that kind of put it into perspective like that, like there is a right place to be and once we're on the road you know towing and stuff and going to these events that that's really not going to be that big of a deal as long as we're on top of you know the space for the shore power and, and even if not you know the generator work and stuff by then but 
I mean, the Shore Power just made it so much nicer and way more comfortable and so much more chill. I had all the stuff out, and I mean, just been a super awesome environment. So really excited about that. But either way, we got like a month and a half or so before we're able to get really cracking on the WRX. Well, before the WRX was really running. So I got stuff to still do. And some of it was kind of tough to really spend the money on the equipment, like the tires that it needed, or, you know, like get a trailer. Like basically, you know, I've got this big chunk of money for my house. I've got, you know, transmissions pending, parts that I want to buy, stuff coming in from foreign countries, a laptop that I need to get for editing, so I don't have to do it all on my phone, and all this different crazy stuff. And, you know, just spent 17 grand on RV. And, like I just felt like the money was just going away, just bam, bam, bam. But kind of the plan was is you know you get the money, get the money from the house. We make these investments and stuff, and then you just kind of cruise. So helped me get the tires. So I got the tires. Truck drives so much better with the tires, and um, and it's the and it's been actually like a big night and day difference. Registered for a couple of nights at High Plains. Uh, just to be out here plugging the short power. It's so fun hanging out with my friends. Uh, we'll have a video posted about basically just the Pony Express. Kind of some basic coverage that we got. You know, not driving, but I was just spectating. Uh, but literally outside my window, I'm sure you guys have maybe have seen the picture, but it's literally the tracks right out there. You can see the cars go by. And, the, and it was, you can be in here if you wanted to be in AC if it was super hot. You could go outside and talk to the people. You take the dogs out and everything was just so chill and so much fun like this is this is right where i want to be so tomorrow or sunday i should say i think today is uh june 20th so uh was that 11 days since i sold my house so tomorrow um, i'm picking up my dad and i'm picking up frank spurs in the rv and we're gonna drive all the way to georgia to pick up a trailer so the trailer is the next big, big spend for um, for the whole setup. And I'm super excited that like emotionally I'm able to get over that like hump that we're spending the money, that we're doing stuff, and now we're actually putting the pieces together. It's already hard enough to figure out where I'm going to park the RV. And now before I even have that figured out, um, I think Ben Council might come in the clutch on that. But before I even have that figured out, you know, I got to figure out where I'm going to park this trailer. And I got to figure out where I'm going to park this stuff. You know, that's already like 30 feet long. So it's just super wild. Um, but yeah, that's basically kind of where we're at. That's um, how we got the trailer. And feeling a little bit like a criminal. Feeling a little bit free at the same time. And just in general though, like the vibe is right. Super excited. Um, and it really feels like it's happening. It's not just like, oh, Ryan's going to sell his house. Like Ryan sold his house. Like, Oh, Ryan's going to buy his RV. Like, Ryan lived in a Suburban for two days and said, fuck this, we're getting an RV. And we got the RV and like, oh, Ryan's going to get a trailer and he's going to race and we're getting a trailer. And so the pieces of the puzzle are falling together. I mean, my apologies to anyone out there who's like, hey, man, or like, are you going to commit to this? You're going to do that, you know, or which event you're going to be at? And I really want to do all that stuff. And, um, but I can't be super committal until all the pieces of the puzzle come together. But, yeah, such, it's just crazy. I mean, right now, Nell's asleep on the couch. Sam's asleep on the recliner. And I'm making this video, and I'm getting ready to edit my little uh, Pony Express video. So, I call this a success. Uh, I'm really excited, excited to be doing this with you guys and kind of document my journey. Um, don't be thinking that there's going to be a fans-only account started up for that room right there. But, uh, but yeah. It's going to be a good time. So keep following us, subscribe, you know, like, and uh, it's definitely going to be a little bit of that race car, living in an RV, kind of, um, you know, nomadic lifestyle that I'm. Uh, everybody wants to do, and I'm going to try and do it. So follow along with us, and if you're in some crazy-ass state, and you know that there's a race by you once we get this thing sorted out between my civic and my uh, um my impreza like i want to go and do more stuff so race build party every day even if it's literally i'm just out here you know looking at watching what people are doing out there on the track like 
today was just it was a great time i i wish i was out there with a the car but i'm way happier being out here in this rv than if i'd have just been sitting at home watching netflix so stay tuned and uh we'll see what kind of crazy stuff we got coming up next